Good morning and welcome here to St Andrews this morning. Uh, a really warm welcome, particularly if you are a visitor today, if you're here in person or a visitor watching online as well. Um, you are really welcome. Just going to have a, a few very quick notices before we get into the main proceedings. Um, Just to say, um, the, this afternoon's fate, Malvern Wells Village fate, sadly has been cancelled because of um, national events. Um, so that is not on if you were thinking of going there. But what is on is next Saturday there is our new ladies' coffee or breakfast morning, 9 o'clock at 4. And it's a great chance for ladies to get together um, and for men to stay at home and... Um, dads to sort the kids out while the ladies go and have a nice time together. Um, that's at four and just turn up I think and um, do enjoy each other's company. Also uh, when they come back they can then let, let the, well anyone come for uh, the St Andrews tidy up which will happen next, next uh, Saturday morning if you're able to come and help male or female um, then come and join us tidy up. And uh, next Sunday uh, we're having our Who's Coming to Lunch, which is an event we have every so often where we just uh, invite people to sign up to guest or host to go to different people's houses for lunch to enjoy uh, food together and fellowship. Um, today is the last Sunday to sign up for that, so if you want to come be part of that, do sign up on the list by the welcome desk and then Val and others will get together this week and match up guests and hosts um, and we'll let you know where you're going or who you're having to lunch. And if you're new to us or haven't been uh, here before, um, then um, all our news, uh, we don't have a printed news sheet, but all our news is on electronic mailing, which you can access and you can get emailed to you by clicking that button on the website. If you'd like the, to, that to be sent to you, then please do um, get that sent and click that. Just uh, to say what's happening in the service today, my name's Dave Bruce, I'm the rector, and Helen Wilkinson, one of our um, assistant retired clergy, is going to be uh, speaking later on, and we're going to be sharing communion today. But of course, today, uh, this week, has been a momentous and historic week, hasn't it? And today is a special Sunday where we gather in the midst of a time of national mourning, to give thanks and celebrate the life of our late Queen Elizabeth II and to remember her before God. And during the service today, we're going to have some time while the children are still in to reflect together and to give thanks for her amazing life of service to her country and to her God. And we're going to be praying too for our new king, King Charles III, as he begins his reign. And right at the end of the service, after the blessing, we're going to have the chance to sing the national anthem uh, too. But we are going to be keeping our sermon series today because today we were due anyway to be thinking about when Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And in many ways, it's so, I think, so, um, uh, so in keeping with um, just the theme of today for the Queen's deep Christian faith led her to seek so faithfully to follow the light of Christ throughout her life. And in her own unique way, she reflected Jesus, the light of the world, to the world, didn't she? Often speaking of how in the darkest times, the light of Christ shines brightly, bringing hope, bringing comfort, and bringing peace. And so today, in these changing times, we come afresh to Jesus, the light of the world, the light who never goes out, the King of Kings who never changes. So I'm going to begin by just, well, actually, I'm going to have a friend, Penny, you're going to come up. Penny's going to come and help light this special candle. <laughs> Thank you, Penny. As we light this candle, 
We light this candle to remind us of Jesus' presence here. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So would you stand, please, and we're going to say these opening words. I'll say the bits in yellow and you join in the bits in white. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Why should we be afraid? The Lord is the stronghold of our life. What have we to fear? Let us come and worship God. Let us come and praise the King of Heaven. And today we're going to start with a special hymn, which I'm told was one of the Queen's favourites, which is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Because our late Queen knew that actually she was a Queen who served under the King of Kings. And there's one lovely story where she once exclaimed to one of her chaplains after a sermon um, who preached on the second coming. She said this, she said, How I wish that the Lord would come in my lifetime. When he asked why, she said this. She said, because I should so love to lay my crown at his feet. So let us praise the King of Heaven. That whilst earthly kings and queens are only for a time, that you, our heavenly king, reign forever. And thank you that you are always with us, bringing light and hope into the darkness of our worlds. And we come before you now this day to worship you, to hear your word of life, to pray for our nation and our world, and to encounter you afresh. Give us this day your light and your hope, your comfort and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Do take a seat and we're going to just watch a, a short video which has been particularly put together to celebrate um, the Queen's life and her faith 
uh, particularly for families. And um, after that, we're going to just stand for a short time of silence before I'm going to say a special prayer, which has been written for, uh, particularly for children to um, give thanks for the Queen at this time. But first of all, let us watch this short reflection. And uh, as we do, we can reflect on our own special memories and give thanks to God for who our Queen was to us. It's with profound sadness, but also great thankfulness, that we remember Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who served so faithfully. As Britain's longest reigning monarch, the majority of us have never known a time when Queen Elizabeth II has not been on the throne. She has been a constant presence in an ever-changing world. When she was ten, her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated, and her father became King George VI. In 1947, the Queen married Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, and they were married for 73 years. The Queen had four children, eight grandchildren, and twelve great-grandchildren. She saw many Prime Ministers come and go. Although the Queen was a world leader, she was consistently kind, hard-working and respectful. She bestowed honour on those who made great contributions to society, but she also paid tribute to ordinary people, whose work went unseen and unrewarded. The Queen carried out her duty to her country, cheerfully and faithfully. The Queen was also a Christian, and was always open about her faith. Six months before her coronation, she asked the people of the Commonwealth and the United Kingdom to pray for her, that God may give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making, and that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. God has certainly answered these prayers throughout her reign. In her 2002 Christmas Day broadcast, she said, I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. In 2014, she called Jesus her inspiration, role model and anchor, who stretched out his hands in love, acceptance and healing on the cross. Jesus is the king of all kings and queens the ruler, reigner, and creator of the whole world, yet he came to serve, not to be served. In 2011, the Queen spoke of our need for salvation from our recklessness and our greed. She said, God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive we will forever be humbled and inspired by her determination to dedicate her life to her throne, her people and her God. We honour her for her years of service devoted to both her country and God and we thank Jesus, the King of all, for our Queen who served her King. I invite us to stand for a short time of silence to remember and to give thanks ourselves to God for our late Queen. And a prayer written especially for children. God, our Father, all through our country, we are sad at this time because our Queen is no longer with us. She will be missed by so very many. 
but we know that you are looking after her. Bless those close to her. May they know they are remembered by us. And bless our country at this time of change. May we all work together as one family and be ready to serve others as our Queen served us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. We're going to sing again, um, The Lord's My Shepherd, another special um, hymn, modern hymn at this time. And just as we sing this, perhaps if the children could uh, uh, leave just during this song as they go off to their classes, their groups, and you're going to learn more about Jesus, the light of the world.
Jesus, the light of the world, step down into the darkness to rescue us, to save us, and to call us to be the lights in a dark world. And yet we haven't always lived as Jesus would have wanted us to live. We haven't always lived as he's called us to. We sometimes have self have hidden in the darkness and we fail to bring our light into those dark places that we've been called to. So just as we stand, let's perhaps for a moment come and confess anything that we need to before God's. Just come and say sorry for those times where we haven't shone our lights and ask his forgiveness afresh. God of glory, you sent Jesus among us as the light of the world to reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and pride hide the brightness of your lights. We turn away from the poor. We ignore cries for justice. We do not strive for peace. Forgive us, God. In your mercy, cleanse us of our sin and baptize us once again with your spirit so that as forgiven and renewed people, we may reflect the love and life of Jesus Christ into our worlds. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image that we may be his lights once more in this dark world to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do take a seat and we're going to hear our scripture read by uh, Chris and then Helen's going to come and share God's word. This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 12 to 20, and it can be found on page 1073 of the Church Bibles. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, Where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Shall we begin with prayer? Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Enlighten our thinking this morning, we pray, that we may see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. On Friday, I ended up in Hereford to the sound of 96 bells ringing out from the cathedral. Or rather, I presume that there were 96, one for every year of the life of Queen Elizabeth. But lost in my thoughts about the monarch, I wasn't really counting. When I went into the cathedral, there were candles there for members of the public to light, to remember and to pray. There were lots of candles. And there was a queue for the Book of Condolence. At a time when so much about the world feels insecure and the future uncertain, the passing away of the only sovereign that most of us have ever known feels like just another shaking of the foundations in the accepted order that we're used to. The candles in the cathedral reminded me that of our many festivals, lots of them involve lights. If not a candle, we might remember with a bonfire or a beacon or fireworks. And for the Jewish people of Jesus' day, it was no different. At the annual festival of tabernacles, the Hebrew people remembered God leading them in the wilderness. <clears throat> they would camp out in makeshift booths to remind them of how at that time they had no proper home to call their own. <clears throat> Part of the celebrations involved great lights. To lead them on their journey, God had given them a pillar of fire at night and a cloud by day. And the cloud and fiery pillar had showed them the way to go as they journeyed through the wilderness fleeing the slavery of Egypt, heading for the freedom of the promised land. And in the Jerusalem of Jesus' day, many pilgrims came to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of the Tabernacles. They came to remember that God had always been present to help, protect, and lead them on life's journey. In the temple, there were spectacular lights to remind people of God's continuing presence with them. They were designed to bring such a great light across the local community that singing and dancing and celebration could carry on throughout the night. And it is against this backdrop, right there in the courts of the temple, that Jesus makes this astonishing statement. I am the light of the world. It is a statement that carries a clear claim. I am the Messiah, the Saviour, the one whom the Jewish people have long been expecting. I am the one who now lights your way. All other lights are temporary. I am the source of all light. I am showing the way not just for the Jewish people, but for all people everywhere, right across the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. It was a claim so shocking in Jewish culture, the claim to be God, the great I am, that some of the crowd picked up stones to try to stone him to death. Now, light is a powerful theme throughout scripture. It's there at the start and at the end, right across time from beginning to end. It's there in creation. In the beginning, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was. And Genesis 1 tells us that God saw that the light was good. The light was good because without light, there would be no life. The whole of creation needed light to function, and it still does. And in the end, 
When God calls time on time as we know it, a new heaven and earth will be revealed. And in that newly transformed place, we are promised an eternity of endless light. John's vision in Revelation says this, I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light. From beginning to end across time, God is the source of all light. As the Apostle John writes in his first letter, God is light, in him is no darkness at all. 1 John 1 verse 5. This is his very nature for all time. Images of light abound in the Bible. They're for all time. And there are over 260. In addition to the wilderness wanderings with the fiery pillar, there was the rainbow of Noah the burning bush of Moses and the vision of the prophets who could see a brighter future yet to come. Light is a major theme and every time it's mentioned, God is its source. In the New Testament, we find in the book of Hebrews that the writer takes up this vision of the prophets and this theme of light by opening his letter like this. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, but in these last days he's spoken to us by his Son, through whom he also made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. The Son is the radiance of God's glory. Light again. The writer's telling us that Jesus, God's son, also embodies light in his very nature. And that's why John opens his gospel by focusing on the light and life that Jesus brings, which he summarizes in verse 19. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. No wonder that Jesus makes his proclamation I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This really is the very nature of who he is, who he always was, and who he will always be. So what does that mean for us now, today? Well, Jesus sums it up himself, in a sense, by saying that when we come to him, we have the light of life. That means that in the warp and weft of what goes on to make up our everyday lives, Jesus will offer us his light to guide us, to help us, whatever the circumstances. The light of Christ is for all time, for any and every situation. The light of Christ is the light of life. When Jesus stood in the courts of the temple and said, I am the light of the world, it was in a particularly insecure time of history. It was at the height of the Roman Empire, and that meant huge uncertainties for the whole of the known world. The first century was a time of great change, with people traveling for trade and commerce over a wide area. This resulted in ethnic tensions, with clashes over belief and worship. The Romans submitted their subjects to a harsh tax regime that people knew to be both unjust and corrupt. For many people, there was just simply the daily grind in places where beggars were a familiar sight on the streets and where people struggled to make ends meet. For Jewish people at that time, There was fear, insecurity, and also anger 
an anger born of the grief of fighting for their national identity in a world where they were generally dishonored and despised. And life for us today frequently feels no more secure. The passing away of Elizabeth II increases that sense of the old order that we've been used to. Going, that it's changing. Everything's changing and shifting under our feet. Climate change is in need of urgent action and there's a war in Europe. All of us are vulnerable to inflation and the cost of living quite rightly concerns us. My sister, who runs three food banks in the northwest of England, is rightly concerned about the winter to come as fuel prices rise. So how does knowing Jesus, the light of the world, help with all of that? Well, first of all, as God's light shines in our lives, we can see him in creation. Light always illuminates everything else. That's its nature. And if you make Jesus your companion on a walk, for instance, the world that you see is illuminated. All around us, we can see the beautiful world that God made for us to enjoy. With him and for free. It's a gift that needs to be valued and treasured. Living in that moment with him. Secondly, when we're looking for a way forward, he's given us prayer and his word, the Bible, to read. I noticed that yesterday, King Charles III said before the Privy Council that he will be seeking the power of Almighty God to assist him in his new role. There are so many promises in the Bible that can help. This is called a preaching scarf, and if I wear clergy robes, I can wear this uh, when I preach. It doesn't really go with what I've got on today. So um, it would normally go uh, over my head and down here, but uh, for those people who are watching online, who obviously can't see this, so I'll wrap this around here so that we can see what it's got written at the bottom. And at the bottom here, it says, the unfolding of your word gives light. It's Psalm 119, verse 130. And you know, when we read the Bible for comfort and for help and for guidance on the way ahead, it brings light. We find peace and reassurance light bulb moments. God speaks to us. And if we neglect Bible reading, then we're the loser. The Psalms, for instance, take us through every season of the soul. If you're feeling low, try a Psalm of lament. Psalm 27 opens, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Lay hold of such promises of God's light on the path to bring comfort and inspiration. It was in her Christmas address in 2014 that our late Queen said this, we can surely be grateful that 2,000 years after the birth of Jesus, many of us are able to draw inspiration from his life and message and to find in him a, strength of source, a source of strength and courage. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If we prepare to open ourselves up to his light, the light of life that Jesus offers us can touch every area of our lives. In our reading from John 8, the religious group known as the Pharisees just didn't want that to touch their lives didn't want that thought, didn't want to go there. They just got bogged down in petty arguments with Jesus. How much better it would have been if they could have allowed the light of Jesus to shine on all that they were and did. Because light brings transformation and some people are afraid of that. But when we invite the light of Jesus to shine on our lives, our lives will find new horizons, fresh vistas, and we'll be able to see life through a God-soaked lens. 
Psalm 37 here says, how priceless is your unfailing love, O God. Sorry, Psalm 36, that you've got a bit of it on the screen. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast in the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. In your light, we see light. With Jesus, the more we see, the more there is to see. God shares light in order that he may share himself, his nature, his glory with us. I found this to be true in August when we had here a, a series about people who encountered the light more deeply. And it was called Heavenly Encounters. And I was particularly impacted by the story of Elisha. In 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha is in a tight spot. His enemies are coming after him with an army, and his servant expresses the fears that we'd all have in a situation like this. Oh no, my lord, what shall I do? Complete panic. Elisha, however, is quite calm. He looks beyond the gathering enemy hordes to see God's light illuminating a host of angel armies that stand ready to guard him against the enemy. Don't be afraid, Elisha said to his servant. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Seeing what God was doing banished all fear. And not only is Elisha himself protected, the story ends up with him being able to stop a war and the lives of many people are saved. The whole story had such an impact on me that I went away thinking how I might allow God's light to shed light on situations in which I'm involved. How might I increase my capacity to experience the presence of God in my daily life? Well, I'm interested in politics, but most of what we hear about is through the lens of the world's media, who don't always give us the full picture. You have to search around to get different ideas of what's going on. And so I prayed that I might be able to have Elisha type seeing, that God would show me things he would shine light on things that would help me to pray in such a way that maybe even I could stop a war or a conflict at the very least. So I prayed that at the weekend on the Sunday and three nights later on the Wednesday, I had a dream about Rishi Sunak. <laughs> maybe it was God's sense of humor, but the Dream gave me some insight into a political situation, so the next day I was able to pray in a more focused way. That's the light of Christ, shedding light on situations. As Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. On Thursday afternoon, I was working at my laptop in my study. I'd heard on the news a little bit earlier that the Windsor family were gathering at Balmoral. At about three to half past three, round about then, I didn't look at the time, I raised my head to look out of the window and to pray for the royal family. And as I did so, Part of a verse from one of Paul's letters came into my mind. I have finished the race. It was as simple as that. I have finished the race. And I thought, that's it, she's gone. The queen promoted to glory. And a voice from the throne room, as she comes and lays her crown at his feet, what a wonderful image, says, well done good and faithful servant. Extraordinary, a queen being welcomed by the king of kings. So I looked up the whole of that verse, which is in 2 Timothy 4 verse 7, and it says this, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is a in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. 
I'm going to have a crown next to the Queen's. There's an old hymn from the 18th century by a poet called William Cooper. Sometimes a light surprises the Christian while he sings. It is the Lord who rises with healing in his wings. Ah, I thought. Sometimes a light surprises the Christian while she sits at her laptop on a Thursday afternoon. It is the Lord who rises with healing on his wings. Let's allow the light of Jesus to shed light into the warp and weft of our daily lives and to change our thinking. He offers us not only freedom from the fear that dark and difficult circumstances in our lives tend to bring, he offers us by his light a way forward and, we can, and he will give us new perspectives. This offer is for everyone of us. He's reaching out to us. Whatever our background or situation, God wants to light up our way on our journey through life, right to the very end. And on the way, he speaks through his world and his word. We just need to be open to all that Jesus has to offer. The one who said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen. Let's respond to that by singing our creed, I believe in God our Father.
now time for our prayers. Could we, uh, as you can see from the slide up there, we have a refrain to say in between each prayer. I will say at the end of a section, Lord of all the world, and you will say, let your light shine. Let's have a practice. So, Lord of all the world, let your light shine. Okay, we'll start before we pray, just with the introduction from the church service of prayer and reflection. Today we come together to remember before God her late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, to give thanks for her life and to comfort one another in grief. So let us pray. We do indeed thank you, Heavenly Father, for the life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Thank you for the selfless way she served her people throughout her reign. Thank you for her statementship in the way she was able to relate to and work with leaders from across the whole world. Thank you that she was a unifying voice in our nations that are too often divided by disputes and disagreements. Thank you again that in her own times of trouble, she was able to show the way forward, acting with kindness, compassion, and goodness. Thank you that her whole reign was characterized by her own great integrity and for her devotion to the people and the causes that she served. Thank you too for her clear faith in Jesus Christ and the way that her life honored this faith that she openly professed. Thank you that your light Jesus shone brightly through her. Lord of all the world, let your light shine. We pray especially for her family who are dealing with the loss of a mother, grandmother and great-grandmother who had been an ever-present in their lives. Comfort them in their grieving, unite their hearts together and especially be close to the great-grandchildren as they come to terms with what has happened. We pray too for the wider communities in our nations and in the Commonwealth too. Be close, Lord, to all those who mourn and ask that we all will find comfort and hope in your love. Lord of all the world, let your light shine. Everlasting God, we pray for our new King, Charles III. Bless his reign so that truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish among us. Help him to find his voice as monarch and may he quickly find favor in the Commonwealth during the inevitable changes that will follow. Thank you for his recent declaration of the importance of faith in his life and ask that he will seek you, Lord Jesus, in all that he does. Lord of all the world, let your light shine. We pray now for our government and especially for our new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. In these difficult times, please give her your wisdom to make good and correct decisions over global issues, the economy and the cost of living crisis. We ask that you will help her lead with integrity and grace to serve the cause of righteousness in our nation. We pray too that in her time of office, she will uphold religious freedom, free speech and freedom of conscience so that the good news about Jesus can be freely heard and understood. Lord of all the world, Lord, shine. We pray for the church at this time, especially the churches in this area. 
Father, you have given us the responsibility to shine your light into the neighbourhood around us. As your people, purify our hearts from selfishness and fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we will have the power to demonstrate your love to all. Help us to support and strengthen all those in need so that together we will navigate the challenges that lie before us. Give wisdom to Dave, to Liz, to Helen and the leadership team uh, around them and ask that you will continue to provide the resources that we need to fulfill the vision we know that you have given us. That is to be a blessing to all. We ask too for your light to shine on and in our children and youth as they settle into the, their new classes at school so that they will qu quickly make new friends and enjoy the process of learning. We also ask, Lord, that they will mature and grow in their love and passion to serve Jesus in the home and in school. Lord of all the world, let your light shine. Finally, let us just have a moment of quiet as we pray for those in sickness and in difficulty. Lord of all the world, let your light shine. Amen. As we come around the communion table to uh, finish our service, I want to encourage you to dwell on that phrase which Helen shared. Let the light of Jesus shine on your lives. And just as you're receiving the bread and the wine, as you're sitting as the band plays or as you worship, just be open to whatever that means for you. Maybe actually that you are grieving today for other, not just the Queen, but for other losses. Let the light of Jesus shine and bring you light in your darkness. Maybe that you've got a situation in your life which you need guidance for, that you don't know the way. Let the light of Jesus speak to you and guide you in the silence as you pray. Maybe that God would put on your heart something like God put on Helen's heart this morning. Just a particular situation, you will, you, you, he's calling you to pray, will you show me what the light of Jesus looks like on that situation? Just offer that in prayer to God. And as you receive the bread and the wine, we receive nourishment to go out and shine to a needy world. So let us stand. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give thanks and praise. It's right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. And on the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread. And he gave you thanks. 
He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. And at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. So with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Do sit or kneel as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Do come and receive as you are directed. There'll be um, non-alcoholic and gluten-free at the front if you um, would like, and, uh, but not at the back.
in a moment I'm going to say a final prayer and blessing and then we are going to sing the national anthem and I want to encourage us to sing it you know we don't take glory away from God but actually we sing it as a prayer we sing it as a prayer for our new king the person who now is the head of the Church of England praying that actually God would strengthen him and God would, would equip him and give him the light that God gave his mother to be the man that God has called him to be. And he knows and we know that he needs those prayers. So a, a blessing, first of all, let's say these words together. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Keep us following you so that we never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.